This is a Hot Pie Media original. Welcome to the Amy Edwards Show. I'm your host, and do we have a freaking awesome episode today? Nisha Khanna, MD, is joining us, and she has so much incredible knowledge to share about Ayurvedic technique, about sex practices, about short ways that we can implement these things too into our lives. She talks too about her own practices. Um, it's enlightening and incredible. So cannot wait to get to that today. And I have some other things to tell you. If you're watching, you may notice a piece of art behind me. So I'm stoked to talk about that and tell you a little quick story about it. Um, welcome. So happy you're here. Rate, review, follow, subscribe, do all the good things, share it if it speaks to you. And I have a feeling that it will today because Nisha is so incredible. Um, yeah. Are you ready to better your life? Are you ready to just become that much better and then take the next step and the next step and the next step? Me too. That's why we're here. So uh, let's keep on doing it and let's get to the show. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp can help you start living a happier life right now through professional licensed therapy done securely online. That totally appeals to me. And that's why I've started using them. <laughs> I decided I needed some therapy. I mean, you hear me on this show, right? And so there are things that we need to go further in. And it's not about self-help. It's about really working through some things that come up for you and leading yourself to a better life. So you can take this step with better help. They have a broad range of expertise available, which oftentimes is hard to find, right? You want to get a reference. You're like looking around. No, they make it easy. And also if you feel like your therapist that you get matched with isn't a fit, they don't care. <laughs> they're like, fine, let's switch you. They have so many that they're like, let's find someone who is. How rad is that? So once you get in there, you can start communicating with someone in under 48 hours you can log in anytime. You can send messages to your therapist. You can do it however you want. You can like do phone. You can do video. You can do just text messages if you want to, which I think is really, really cool. You get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, uh, you don't even have to have the travel time of going to traditional therapy, right? They also make it cheaper. It's more affordable than traditional therapy and they have financial aid available if you need it, which during this time, a lot of us do. And that is totally cool. They are committed to helping us all live better, happier lives today. So you can go read reviews at betterhelp.com slash reviews. They have an absolute ton of them all the time. They're there, when I went on to fill out my stuff about BetterHelp at the bottom, they had new reviews popping up like right then that I guess people were just posting. It was a trip. It's so cool. And they're all good. How about that? So go to betterhelp.com slash AES for Amy Edwards show and you can get 10% off your first month. So again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash AES. And you can join the over 1 million people who've Take, taken charge, started to take charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. So again, that's 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash AES. Hi, and welcome to the show. We have such a cool episode today. Nisha showed up and showed up. I just, she's like got the most peaceful, beautiful energy. She's so knowledgeable and just calm and speaks so clearly about things that can seem complicated, <laughs> which I'm all about that. Can you just break it down for me so I can understand it? Because sometimes um, medical language, spiritual language, all of it can get over my head and then you just kind of check out and your eyes glaze over. That's not going to happen today. I promise it is not going to happen. Even when we're talking about things like Ayurveda and terms that maybe you're not, maybe you're not so familiar with. So, or maybe you think you're familiar with them, but she has a way of explaining like Tantra and Tantric practice that I found super accessible and it has made it clearer in my own mind. First and foremost, let's check in. If you've been following along in the last few weeks, I have been talking about sex a lot, which we're going to talk about today with Nisha. And 
um, she's a doctor, she's an internist, and she has a lot of knowledge about sexual practices, which is exactly what I was talking about last week in my solo cast, like the resistance I was feeling. So checking in on that really quick, it's just still a road for me. I have had some issues with my partner in trying to implement this and navigating the best way to say, hey, here's what I need and really getting communication going first. So that part of it's been pretty cool. I still haven't got my wand in the mail, so I haven't started that practice yet that Jade talks about. If you missed that episode, highly recommended. Jade is incredible. Um, okay. So I don't have too big of a check-in on that, except that I am starting with communication and with trust of myself. Those have been really beautiful places to get fundamental on all the stuff that builds on that, the orgasmic practices and the sex practices, which we're going to talk about today, which I'll be excited to check in next week about that stuff. So um, one quick story I want to tell you before we get to the interview today is about the artwork that is behind me. I am so excited. Um, my friend, Anthony West, who I met through Fit for Service, um, which is Aubrey Marcus's mastermind program, and I'm not a member anymore, but I certainly met an interesting community of amazing, incredible people through it, including Anthony. And so the story is about this art and what this reminds me of now. He was like, I have this print. And so he printed it on canvas. And if you're not watching, I will post it on my Instagram. So you can go there to Real Amy Edwards and you can check it out there too. And so. Anthony did this like it's got all these like light codes in it and it's got the hand of God essentially if you can see if you're watching you can see it right behind me and it's got a volcano and it's so cool it's got a very cosmic look to it and the colors really match what we do in the studio with all the cosmic look right and the purples and the blues and so huge thanks to him. So Anthony reaches out and Anthony and Justin, my partner had really gotten along well. They were like instant friends. And I thought that was great. I really like Anthony. I like his partner. And so I was just, uh, when he was coming to town and he reached out and he said, I have a gift for you. I figured he texted me because Justin's hard to get a hold of and doesn't always reply. And so he texted me and said, I have a gift for you. And I was like, oh, yeah, he probably means for me and Justin. Yeah, cool. He has a gift for us. And so I was like, that's cool. And we didn't get to connect right off the bat. I was busy, but I was trying to make it happen. And I knew that he and Justin were friends, better friends than me and Anthony were. And I figured... Uh, you know, people reach out to me to get to Justin a lot of times and the gift is probably really for Justin. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. So Anthony um, still messaged and he was like, I'm still in Austin. I still want to see you guys. This was in, I think, August. And so finally we made it happen and he came over and he brought this piece of art. It was rolled up. It was not stretched yet. I got it stretched and he pulls it out and shows us. And it is just so cool. And he's telling us all about it. And um, he's also a tattoo artist, by the way. He's just a talented artist all the way around. So he stretches it out on the table. He's telling us all about it. And I'm like, wow, this is so cool. I wonder what we're going to do with this and, you know, all that. So they're like, well, let's take a picture with it. And I'm like, yeah, you guys get in with it, right? So they're like, why don't you get in the picture? And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's cool. You know, it's cool. I, like I just basically completely assumed that it had nothing to do with me, even though Anthony messaged me about it, said, I have a gift for you. And I still didn't make the connection. I still didn't think it was for me. It's kind of, I feel this as I'm saying this, like I feel this in my heart and you see where I'm going with this. I totally thought, um, it was not a gift for me. I just, and I know there's like a worthiness thing there, like that, that Justin is like more valuable 
And, you know, (laughs) he's the one that people want to connect with and want to reach. And so anyway, there, there I am. And I, I, I finally, Anthony and Justin both say, this picture's for you. It's for your studio. Anthony says something like, I knew it would go with your studio. And all of a sudden something clicks and I'm like, wait, what? This is for me? And he's like, yes, it's for you. And I was like, wait, it's, it's for me, not for Justin, not for us. He's like, no, it's for you. And I was like, so shocked. And all of a sudden it clicked. And I felt really bad because it was as if I wasn't listening. It was as if, too, I felt like if I made the assumption it was just for me, I would be wrong. <laughs> like, why would I assume that? So I guess the moral of the story is don't sell yourself short. Things are going to come your way that are beautiful, that are for you. You are special. You matter. You're important. And accept the blessings that come your way. Trust that there they are. See, that's my own trust that I'm working on too. Trust that there they are. That when someone says this is a gift for you, it's for you. (laughs) Just like this beautiful piece of art. That is now our first piece of art on the show. And as we move forward, oh, they just showed me, they broke through another wall in this studio and they're like expanding and putting in new studios and all that. So we're going to be able to hang some art. So I'm so excited because Justin's already got like two pieces. And so I'm excited that I've got one now. So I have to say a humongous thank you to Anthony and also an apology that I didn't understand at first that it was for me. And thank you so much. If you want to find him, his name is Anthony West. And I will put a a link and his Instagram handle in the notes so you can find him. He's at Asirio Arts, A-S-I-R-I-O Arts, A-R-T-S on Instagram. And so I highly recommend his work. It's really beautiful and really interesting and really deep. And he's just a really, really cool dude. So thank you, Anthony from the bottom of my heart. This means so much to me and I'm so happy I finally got it stretched. It took me a while. So it's finally stretched. Beautiful canvas. And if you want to see it again, go to my Instagram at Real Amy Edwards. All right, let's move into today's interview. I am so excited to welcome Nisha Khanna, Dr. Nisha Khanna. So she's a board certified internist. She's been practicing medicine since 2005. She was Western trained, born into an Indian family. She's been studying Ayurveda. I don't think I'm saying it right because she says it. I know she says it right. She says Ayurveda, like pushes the D a little bit. So I'll try and work on that. And she um, studied in New Mexico, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, with a world-renowned Ayurvedic physician and educator, Dr. Vasant Lad. Lad. And she has also learned Marma, which is Vedic acupressure, which she talks about at the end, which sounds so cool. I absolutely want to try that. I haven't even heard of it. And she's an Ayurvedic teacher. She directed Whole Foods Medical and Wellness Center and became further certified in functional medicine and mind-body therapies and energy medicine. And she intertwines and integrates all these modalities into her treatment plans for private practice now. And so I am so stoked to welcome her. Plus, she's she does a lot of writing. She has interesting practices. Wait till you hear her daily practice that she does. She's written a collection of poems called Drops of Gold, and she is putting on events. She's got one coming up this weekend in Austin. Um, If you are listening to this later, though, you can find her and follow her at Nisha Khanna, M.D. That's N-I-S-H-A-K-H-A-N-N-A-M-D on Instagram or at Dr. I'm sorry. No, that's not right. Nisha Khanna, M.D. dot com. And there she's got like all her courses, how to contact her, how to book online, all that kind of good stuff. So highly recommended that you follow her and check out what she's doing. I I love all the stuff she shares on Instagram too. So um, follow her at Nisha Khanna MD. And 
we have a beautiful conversation today. She talks about ohas. She talks about really practical ways, which you know I love that because I'm like, give me, give me a step by step of how I do this, of how to have an energetic orgasm, um, how to tap into youthful bliss, how to live blissfully all the time. Does all that sound good? It does to me too. That's that's the journey that we're on. That's what we're going for. So let's dive in with Nisha. Big, big thanks to her too. She came on kind of short notice. We just planned this like, I don't know, this week. Well, we talked about it for about um, five days. And so she just, she came in and made it happen. And I'm so excited to share this conversation and stick around for the end. We're going to have a quick wrap up. So thank you so much for being here. Here's Nisha, Kana, and Dee. <laughs> so you sent me this event that you're having, Magnetic Woman. And it could not have been more timely in my life. I read through it and I was like, holy shit, this is all the stuff that's been completely on my mind. I feel like it's trending right now too. Do you? I'm not aware of it trending, but I feel like it's such a important topic. It's so pertinent and um, I'm excited to share more about it. Please do, because I I do feel like there's a trend in talking about Okay, if women open up their orgasms more, you're magnetizing, you're creating and all this. And um, and I've had some angst around it. I did a solo cast on it. And I, you know, and I talked to Jade Bryce recently. And so a lot came up for me about that because I was like, well, great, am I doing this all wrong? You know, and uh, I think there was like inherent womanness that I felt like I was inadequate or something. And I wonder, do you? Do you see that in some people? And like, how'd you even get to this point? Maybe we should say, maybe we should back up a little bit and say how you got to realizing all this and talk a little bit about, you know, this event that Mm. we're talking about and what you teach around it. Okay. Well, first I just wanted to ask you a question. So (laughs) ask me. So you mentioned that you've had some angst come up around it. What is the it? around, am I having orgasms right? Am I doing, like, I get real hung up on like right way, Mm. which creates a lot of problems in my own head. My very first show on this show was all, it was a solo cast about that and how I was like worried about doing it right, you know? Mm. And so I get worried like, okay, well now I've just fucked up and here I am almost 50. And now what I don't have the capacity to magnetize and create and uh, be as radiant and magnetically feminine and all these things that I can because I'm not even fundamentally having an orgasm, right? Mm, That's such a good question. So um, to loop in the answer to what you asked me at first is how did I get here? Yeah. So it's really been both a medical journey, but also a physical journey. So um, a medical, physical, spiritual journey, I should say. So when everything's connected, it, it is. I mean, it really is. <laughs> and so we, when you think about having an orgasm and are you doing it right, there really isn't a wrong way. You know, and I think that that is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Good. Okay. <laughs> there, it's it, there's levels, so we can have we can have sex, and it's just sex. You mm-hmm. know, there's anatomy connecting, and there's stimulation happening, and nervous system firing, and you know, you can end up with. A particular type of orgasm, and we call that an external orgasm. So those are often the more clitoral orgasms. Mm-hmm. However, when you start exploring, it's really how deep do you want to go? And when you go very, very deep in um, in terms of the 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 heightening of your experience of orgasm, it ends up being a very spiritual experience. Mm-hmm. And so, so when and you're talking men and women, or are you just talking women? Both. Both. I feel like women inherently have the capacity to go even deeper than men when it comes to orgasmic experience. Mm-hmm. However, um, men can also have a very profound experience. And it really becomes about when you're in a relationship and having an orgasm as a couple, about 
the connection and the bond and the energy that flows between you two. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's such a magnitude of experience and there isn't a wrong way. It's really just, what are you, what is your goal? What is your intention? And part of it is releasing the goal. You know? I know, because you said, what is the goal? And I think people, I know I've gotten up in my head like, oh, my God, I've got to do this. I'm taking too long. You know, just all these little yeah. things that come up. I think an important... Aspect, when I'm with a partner, I should clarify. And I think one of the most important things to to do in order to approach that, uh, approach sex orgasm is to release attachment to the outcome, like in all mm -hmm. things in life. It's a paradox. But, right. Yeah. And it's almost like the more you're in your head, the less you'll be in your body. And if you're not in your body, if you're disconnected from the present moment, then you, you can't reach that level of orgasm. It's when you release attachment, when you're not in your mind and when you're just fully in the present experience that you, that people are actually able to have an orgasm. Do you think it's maybe not about the orgasm? Maybe it's actually a lesson in being present? Ex exactly. Because what I say is how you have sex is how you ha do your, the rest of your life. So if people want to have better sex, they need to become more present in their life. They need to be more present in their conversations with their work, um, when they're driving, whatever it is. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So you mm -hmm. can't expect to have incredible presence and connection with a person or even with it with yourself in bed if you are not that way in the rest of your life. So it really is a cultivation. And I think that's a big part of Tantra is it's it's a way of life. It's a, a tantric existence. And it's also a very sensual existence. And I feel like when we're we have bodies for a reason, you know, mm -hmm. there's we can do all kinds of meditation where we disconnect from the body and we're kind of in the ether and we're connecting with other beings or whatever they may be. But that's really great to realize that you're just not a body. But the, I think we have to also recognize is that, is that we have a body for a reason. We have a body so that we will use it as a tool to transcendence versus disconnection from the body. Cool. A tool to transcendence. Okay, how do we do that? So it, it really is about getting present and getting present with your senses. So that's so funny because we're sitting here talking about being in your body, but it's actually a tool to transcendence. Yeah, because you can, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really interesting because I think we've been taught a very masculine spirituality, which is to disconnect. What does that sound? What is that? What does that mean exactly? So, for example, sitting in one place for an hour and just being silent, letting, you know, letting all your thoughts go, right? That's, that's masculine? That's a masculine spirituality. Why? Because it's about being out of the body. Mm -hmm. Whereas a feminine spirituality... Would be sensual, would be senses. Yeah. So, so for example, say you see something incredibly, incredibly beautiful in nature. You see a sunset and you're just time stops, right? Mm -hmm. Or you see plants, trees, animals, the moon, whatever it is. Or smells. Smells. Mm -hmm. Smells. Say you're having an amazing dessert and you're tasting it and mm -hmm. it's like all thoughts leave your body, right? So all thoughts leave your mind because you're fully present with that experience. The same thing translates to sensuality um, with a partner or with yourself is when you get fully into your body, you can actually stop time. You can stop your thoughts. And so that's that's a tool to transcendence, right? Because mm -hmm. you're transcending the mind, mm -hmm. but you're doing it through the body. And so it's really an invitation into extreme presence. So whether that's mindful eating or mindful walking when you're in nature or otherwise mindful conversation, it's, it's when nothing else is in your head. And I feel like we have bodies so that we can use them through our senses. And I'm, I love eating. I love music. I love dancing. I love all the things that you can do with your body. And it's a very masculine principle to say, no, forget the body, no desire, no touch, no, you know, that it's what, how do you use it? You know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like this 
our sensuality has been abused and it's been kind of thought to be bad, but it's not. It, it, you can like actually, in what way? Because say, say for example, people say um, it's not good to desire things. It's not good to overeat. It's not good to do, you know, and of course it's mm -hmm. not good to overdo anything, but, um, but it's also not inherently bad. Otherwise, why would it feel so good? <laughs> <laughs> right. Feels great. Actually. And I, th I think honestly, <laughs> indulge, it's, right? Yeah. It's, it's honestly people we're being taught or we have been taught over the ages to disconnect from our intuition, right? Because if something feels good, oh no, that's not good. It's not good for you. But it is about balance, but it's also about diving into that experience and recognizing that that's also a tool to transcendence again. Yeah. Okay. How's this? And then what? And then what? And how's this play out in your own life? So one thing I want to emphasize is we, we have the body in order to use it sexually and sensually as well not just for procreation or for enjoyment or for kind of traditional sex. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you can imagine bringing the presence of meditation into sexuality, the presence of sensual enjoyment into sexuality, and then say you're with a partner or even within yourself, it is possible through that type of orgasm to have a more profound spiritual experience than you can in the deepest meditation or the best psychedelic. Mm -hmm. It because and and that's again to emphasize why we have a body. We have a body in order to use it to connect in the right way with someone. And when I say right way, I mean using it for spirituality. Mm -hmm. And and in that in that has such profound potential to connect you to the divine in both your partner, yourself, but the entire cosmos of divinity. Or by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want people to feel like if they don't have a willing partner or if they don't have a partner at all, that, you know, they're, they're out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it, so I think I mentioned with yourself or with another mm -hmm. and with yourself, it's, it's a really beautiful journey back home to yourself because you're able to understand how profound you are and how profound your connection to everything is through your own sexuality. And we, we talk about that as, um, like an energy gasm. Have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. So it's essentially cultivating your sexual energy and then using that to activate your chakras up the body and then, you know, out the, the top of your head and really entering all that is. And you can do that through a sexual practice with yourself, which is what? So how do you do that? How do you do that? Okay. <laughs> Tell Put, me. You get a really good playlist. Okay. <laughs> Start with that. Mm -hmm. um, something that maybe doesn't have a lot of words, but is rhythmic. Mm -hmm. And you start practicing breathing through your mouth. Through your mouth. Why? Because the throat, having an open mouth and throat connects to the, the sex organs. Okay. And so you breathe in and out through the mouth. Mm -hmm. And... You start to draw energy up through your feet. So say you're lying down on the ground or on a nice cushion or something. One thing I would emphasize since we're going through the step-by-step -step is cultivating a space. So make sure you have, you know, nice smells around you, like sandalwood, rose, those kinds of things that are high vibrational. Um, you're laying on something that feels good to you. You're in a safe space that feels contained. Um, lighting, candlelight, whatever it is to kind of get you in the mood, again, bringing in the senses mm -hmm. and um, perhaps do a ritual around it, bathe, you know, take a bath, relax the body, put some massage oil on you, give yourself a self oil massage. I love that rose sandalwood combination. Cool. And, and so you prepare the body mm -hmm. and then as a self ritual, you, you know, you make lay down. That's one way to do it. Laying down feet on the ground and start to draw energy up through the feet. 
cool. imagining that you're drawing it at, from the earth, bringing it up through the feet, through the legs, up to the pelvis, and you're breathing in and out the, through your mouth to music. Then you start to contract the pelvis. So um, essentially like Kegel exercises. Okay. And do that rhythmically with the breath, with the, with the music. And start to feel the like inner- on, a, on an inhale contraction, on an exhale, relax it. So you would. I want all the details. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to do a, a video, a, a demo. <laughs> um, so you would contract the pelvis forward. So mm -hmm. tilt the pelvis okay. forward as you exhale. As uh, you exhale. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you're breathing in and out through the mouth. <gasps> Uh huh. And tilting the pelvis forward. Okay. Okay. As you do this. Okay. And and you're starting to almost like a cat cow a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But laying down. Uh huh. On your back. So then you'll um, you'll start to build the energy. You're drawing it up. Imagine it that imagine that you're drawing it up through the earth. A warming sensation beginning to come up through your feet up up the thighs, the hips, and then you're building energy as you contract your pelvis and, um, and tilt your pelvis forward. And, and also with the breath, with the exhale, you're, you're building energy. So as that energy begins to build, I like to create a playlist that, um, is more, so you can actually think about it in terms of the chakras, the type of music that you pick. So, sure. um, so for more root chakra, like African drums or like uh, a more primal kind of primal reggaeton mm -hmm. would work at like something, mm -hmm. something more primal. Right. And, and then the song sort of changes and, um, you're moving the energy now. So you're beginning to just visualize, you visualize the energy coming up, you're feeling it and then visualize the energy going more into the sacral area. So the belly button, um, and navel area. And, uh, and then perhaps your music is more, uh, Middle Eastern, you know, okay. like Arabic swinging <laughs> hips, that kind of thing. And you feel free to dance, feel free to let whatever movement wants to flow through you. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a prescription in any way. And then you bring the energy to the um, solar plexus and um, something kind of just rhythmic uh, up into the heart. Now you could use something with words. And when I say bring the energy, you're circulating. So first you start with the, the root chakra and then you circulate it up through, through the navel and you're visualizing it going back, uh, going back almost in a circle to the spine and then back to the forward to the front of the body so okay. like this mm -hmm. and so you this it's circulating and then mm -hmm. you circulate it up from the root mm -hmm. all the way to the solar plexus or you could do a small circle between the navel and the sol solar plexus and then, and then link them after okay and so then you can imagine you just keep linking the circles as you go up the chakras mm -hmm. heart could be more like latin music something with romance lyrics something like that get up to the throat and um and then when you um get more to the third eye and the crown it can be more um like sound bath type of music you uh -huh. know like ethereal and by that time the energy's different it's when you're in the throat area you actually may feel the character of your voice change where um you're even more vocal sounding right because mm -hmm. um you're you've been breathing <sighs> throughout mm -hmm. Uh, but it may sound even more kind of louder or vocal. Um, and and by the time you get up into the third eye and the head, there's less uh, maybe the quality of your voice changes and it's softer or higher pitched um, and and less less volume. Yeah. And less intensity. But because now you're more in the the ether aspect of yourself and. By the time you're done with, say, these seven songs, you're you feel like the energy has just moved throughout your whole body. You've been focusing on the chakras, but it's translated to all parts of your body. So mm -hmm. when you're in the heart space, maybe you're moving your arms more because the energy moves you. It, so you let the energy move you. you you're not trying to move in a certain way. And by the time you're in the crown, you feel like you've just been blasted out of space and 
you may see stars, you may time travel. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, anything's possible. Uh, but Really? But, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you feel completely energized and you feel like you've had an orgasm, but it's been an, but there isn't necessarily that external release because you've channeled it up and around the body and out the body. Yeah. How often do you do this? Well, I think given I have a partner, I practice it with my partner and you all lay side by side and do it. No, you can do it with a partner too. So it's good to start on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you do have a partner, you can circulate the energy between your chakras. So for example, um, the, the woman will inhale mm -hmm. from the man's root chakra and then exhale out her navel and the man will inhale her navel down his root and exhale out to her root. Okay. So you, you can circulate the breath. And, and your breath's like right there inhaling each other or? Well, you could be in what they call the yabyum position, which is seated across from each other. And you're, you know, the woman's legs may be over the mm -hmm. man. And, um, and so you're face to face. I didn't know that's what that was called. Oh yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so that is face to face. Uh -huh. and, and it's great because all your chakras align when you're that way and you're not, focusing on the breath, leaving your mouth, you're focusing on the energy exchange. So thinking okay. of, of basically, you could think of it like the man's energy or the masculine energy is penetrating the woman's field. Mm -hmm. And then she's allowing it to travel up and percolate it through her heart space. Mm -hmm. And then sending that love, that heart space towards him, which opens up his field. So mm -hmm. essentially he penetrates her with his energy and her love penetrates him. And so it ends up being this cycling of energy that you can do, you know, small, small, small little circles mm -hmm. throughout or, and then once you've done that and cultivated the energy, circulate it completely towards yeah. each other. And it sounds complicated, but I think no, it's not too much. I don't think so. Yeah. No, I thought you explained it really well. Okay. Um, and then are you having sex at this point? Like, is there intercourse going on? Is there penetration happening or no? There, or is it optional? It's, it's optional. It can be. I mean, <clears throat> if you feel moved to do that, it, it's going to be heightened. So anytime yeah. you, anytime, but you can do it without, you can do it without. I watched, have you watched sex, love and goop yet? I it's <clears throat> on my list. I haven't seen it. I think it was like, <clears throat> I'm only like three episodes in. There's like six, but the woman who came up with the interject, the erotic blueprint, mm -hmm. she demonstrates it really a lot. Probably what you're talking about. She doesn't exactly explain what she's doing, but she sits on top of her partner in that position. And then they do some sort of energy and breathing thing. And you, I'm not sure still what they were doing, but she's just basically demonstrating what's possible hmm. and to another couple. And they're both like, okay, give me that, you know? Yeah. But I think that you explained it really well. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And there's, there's <clears throat> probably books that have that all detailed out as well. I'm trying to think. Um, I like the Cliff's Notes. Okay. Honestly, honestly, that really, I okay. like to listen to a podcast and like, hear something that we can, you know, consciously work on and get the practices down that we can at least start, mm -hmm. you know, because I think a lot of people don't even know where to start. Yeah. You know, we're all ingrained in this or we all have this like idea ingrained in us of like, this is how you do it. Right. And I think that's culturally passed down. You it know? is and for sure. Essentially, and, so, and society. Yeah. And I think people sort of learn how to have sex mostly through porn. Mm -hmm. You know, the, oftentimes parents are not comfortable talking to their kids about sex and, oh, yeah, mine didn't. and the potential. And then what you learn in sex ed is really just all the things to avoid, you know, and what, and it's basically fear what may happen. <laughs> and so kids are often left just perplexed and not really knowing how to go about sexuality. And it has to be really a re-education of society. And it starts, I think, with even just one partner, men, man or woman, who who wants to go deeper, wants to do something differently. And I really feel that this type of sexual exchange is is 
has the potential to really heal the planet. I know that sounds profound, but um, no, I think that's great. That was my next question. Like, why, you know, do this? And so because one, it builds your relationship with yourself, right? So when you feel your own divinity through your own sexuality and you, you, you feel it because it's in your body, you feel it, you know it to be a truth. And you don't need any assistance. You don't need a drug and you don't need any kind of substance to feel it. You, you know it. And that, that heals your relationship with yourself because you recognize you're divine. Then if you, if you can then use that to relate in a really deep way with your, your partner or whoever, you, you heal your relationships with others, right? So say you're having this profound orgasmic experience with a partner, it's going to be less likely that they're going to, even if they do things that bother you, that piss you off, you know, mm -hmm. you'll have this other profound experience to put that in the mix of experiences between you. And, and it's going to make the things that could ordinarily irritate you seem less, mm -hmm. less intense because you've had the intensity of a positive experience. So it builds connection and it builds trust and it builds your interpersonal skill with the person that you choose to do that with. So, um, so I really think that the healing of the planet is really the healing of these relationships with ourself and with others. And, um, and so it's interesting because in Ayurveda, the sex organs, um, the reproductive system is symbolic of the health of the being. So if things are not right, whether it's desire, sexual desire, libido, or um, amenorrhea, the inability to menstruate, or ovulatory dysfunction, whatever it is, it means that all the tissues of the body preceding that have some kind of issue in it, one, one or all of them. So the other tissues are lymph, blood, muscle, fat, nervous system. And then you get to, um, then you get to the sex organs. Mm -hmm. So say you're stressed out and your adrenals are wasted. You, it will be very hard to have good sex hormone function. So in, when we see it on a physical level, right, from the lens of Ayurveda, that the, that the reproductive organs are symbolic of what is happening in the system, that there's a block in one of these tissues. We can also translate that to if we're not having sex that is profound and spiritual and multidimensionally orgasmic, it's going to be symbolic of a society that's dysfunctional. There's some kind of block in the system. Wow. <laughs> multidimensionally orgasmic. That's a lot, you know, like, so how, I mean, we just study this and do it. Is that it? Well, what we'll go into in my workshop mm -hmm. is essentially we have to take good care of our physical vessel, right? So we have in Ayurveda, we have a body so that we can, we take care of our body so that we can achieve some level of transcendence and say your, your body is not working well for you, either you're fatigued or you've got knee pain or whatever it may be. You won't, you'll, that will be the thing that you're focusing on. You'll be like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm too tired to do whatever I need to do. I'm too tired to really connect with this person. I'm, my knee bothers me. That's where your focus is going to go. So you're having sex. It's going to be your back pain or your knee pain. You're not going to be present in the moment. So the first and foremost important thing as a society to do is to really optimize our physical health. Mental health and physical health go together. And so it is really a, a deep inward journey of healing on, on these levels, physical and mental um, and emotional. And oftentimes the, the spiritual connection can basically permeate and percolate through these layers of the field and heal. I guess that, that's what I was wondering. Is this a path to healing? Like you do this, mm -hmm. it's a path to healing, not only society, but 
our own ailments or issues or blockages. Exactly. And it's a two way street. So essentially, you can have these profound spiritual experiences and heal the physical body and healing the physical body will make it easier to have these profound spiritual experiences. So it's kind of like you have to do the work in both aspects. Hmm. Can we back up for one second and explain exactly what Ayurveda means? Sure. And Tantra too. I've asked people, tantric pet practitioners, but it seems like I get an answer like, oh, it's just, it's kind of too big to explain, you know, and you're like, okay. But maybe those two things you could just, I, and, and I feel like I know, but I don't know. So I would love to hear what you say. Sure. So <clears throat> Ayurveda is the 4,000, roughly 4,000 year old healing system from India. It's come from the Vedas, essentially, which is a very old scripture. And it was created to help the yogis achieve transcendence because they were able to have a very healthy vessel in order to meditate and do the things mm -hmm. that they, they needed to do in order to experience God. And so, you know, briefly, it's taking into account that we are interconnected with the entire universe. And so if this table is made up of, um, it's wood. It, you just break it down into elements. So it's, um, it's I'm not it's, sure it is wood, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's solid. It's, it's solid. Yes. It's, it's quantum it's, particles are in there though. I mean, like you can get down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's earth element, you know, okay. whereas that, that drink you were having is more water element, sure. right? So we are not different from our environment in that we are also made up of earth, water, space between the lungs, ether, um, air that's, you know, mm -hmm. moving throughout our body. Um, and so, and fire. And so ether, air, fire, water, earth make up our manifest reality, but it's also manifested within us. And so that's the principle in Ayurveda is that because everything is made up of these five elements, like attract, like increases like and opposites balance. So for example, um, if you're, so we were talking about allergies earlier, mm -hmm. right? So someone was saying they're congested that if, um, if someone ex is experiencing congestion, there's mucus, there's, um, there's increased water element, increased earth element, mm -hmm. cause it's, it's that density, it's that goopiness. So what, what should they do to balance that? So again, opposites balance, like increases like. So on a rainy day like today, um, where there's more water element, that could actually increase allergies briefly. And that's why I said, okay, <laughs> later it may help, but today you may experience more allergies, um, more symptoms of allergies. And so what could that person do? They could bring more fire into their life, right? So maybe they have like a cayenne lemon drink with spice, right? Um, that spice is fire. It will cut through some of this mucusy buildup. Um, or you just increase your inherent digestive fire, which um, is your metabolism, and that will cut through that. And so, but if they were to have a latte, like a milk latte, and then have a donut, right? That's sweet. That's earth and water element combines to make sweet taste. The milk is earth and water element, sweet. Um, and th this is all coming from Ayurveda. Yeah, it's cool. So if they do that, they're going to probably get sick that evening. The allergies become a sinus infection because more mucus builds in the body, like increases like. So Ayurveda is a tool to understand your interconnection with the environment, the weather, the season, the um, really all of existence. You're connected to it through these elements and you can use it as a tool for health and healing because you can look at what's going on within your body and say, okay, this is happening. I need to balance it. So for example, even emotions have qualities and have elements that are assigned to them. Oh. So for example, anger is hot, right? Sure. Uh, uh, so if you're feeling angry and frustrated, you probably have too much fire element going on within the system. Maybe you ate a spicy meal in, in the summertime and you've been in the sauna, whatever it is, and then you're going to balance that by cooling sweet things. So you have some peppermint tea, you have some rice pudding, maybe mm -hmm. made with coconut milk, which is cooling, or you have the salad with avocados. These things balance the heat and you wear cool colors, you know, so you wear greens and, um, 
and blues, and that that balances you. And even essential oils, sandalwood, rose, those are cooling, jasmine. So say someone's frustrated, right? They could put some essential oils on. They could um, change their outfit if they're wearing a red dress. You know, mm -hmm. They could um, make sure that they think about what they're drinking and they're eating. And essentially, it changes your mood. It changes what's happening internally. Cool. What about Tantra? What do you say about that? Okay. The Tantra definition. So yeah, you know, you're right. Like I think it doesn't like you know, the way yoga has a definition, it's yoking, it's union. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really have a one word. I think if someone were to look up Tantra, it would have multiple words under it. Um, I think the word that I've seen used the most is a loom or a weaving. Um, and, um, if I were to define it just from my own experience and um, transmission, I would say it is the, the weaving of the lower self with the higher self and the weaving of the weaving and the recognition of your interconnectedness with all that, it, that exists, including your partner, but all that's past, all that's present, essentially all that is manifest. I think that's really cool as we talk about our bodies. And, and I've noticed a trend too, or at least I've paid attention to it in my own life that so many times we do try to meditate so much and go in that direction of discounting our body. But that is really about the somatic along with the spiritual and taking into account everything that's there, right? Yes, yes. Um, the somatic, the spiritual. And it's interesting. I gave a talk on Tantra. It was just an introduction to Tantra at a yoga festival. And I didn't prepare for the talk. I just thought, okay, I'm going to just meditate. And that was my preparation the night before. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. How'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> it went really well. Okay. And I think what was really profound is I got the definition of Tantra when I did the meditation. And so essentially I sat down and my intention was, Hey, tantric beings, tantric guides, whoever you are, please enlighten me as to what Tantra means. So that when I communicate what Tantra is to the group tomorrow, that I, you know, am accurate because it's, it's a term that has been used and abused in some ways. Oh, yes. I think we all have this concept of like, you know, sting. You just think of like, you know, this couple having sex for like eight hours or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what I got in that meditation is essentially I felt it was a feeling kind of meditation. And it was I felt like all I saw were stars, essentially, like I pretty much just it was like looking into a galaxy, right? With stars everywhere. And the understanding I got is that- Like this, like my wall? Yeah, exactly <laughs> like this. <laughs> is that, um, is that tan through Tantra, you can recognize that the universe is within you and it's around you and it's through you. And it's, it's essentially- the meditation was the experience of being the universe. And it looked kind of like that. Which was the definition of what it is. Yes. That we are everything. Mm -hmm. I'm on board with that 100%. Totally. Absolutely. That is the truth. And if you can know that, if you can know that through sexuality, isn't that the most profound thing? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think I have on my own. Have I done it with a partner? Maybe. Um you know, I've had just a little trouble in the last few weeks with my own partner, like figuring out how to, you know, engage in these practices. So that's partly why I'm studying it. Cause I'm like, I want that, mm. you know, I want that with someone. And so I'm trying to navigate that. I watched that show, you know, I'm talking to you. I'm figuring, I'm, I'm trying to do the work and I experienced some resistance around it, which I found interesting and tried to step out of that and have an awareness. Why am I experiencing resistance? And I think it was really because like, I just, I just threw a little baby fit about like, well, I want to be doing it right. You know, like, mm. and I had to just 
accept that this is a practice like everything else. Yeah. And it's about enjoying the journey you know, yeah. in all ways. Which I talk about all the time. And I was like, so why am I all of a sudden like, no, this one thing I, I, I want to be done. You know, and I'm like, no, it's, it is. I, and I, I do, I know that. I know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, so it's the journey of whatever your progression may be over time, mm-hmm. but also the journey of the experience when you're in the experience. You know, so the more that you're in your mind, am mm-hmm. I doing this right? The less you're in your body feeling how good it feels. Right. The one thing I will say that I think is, I gave you this whole long description about how you move the energy and I'm glad I did that, but I just, just thinking as you were talking, I should have just cut to the chase. There's a much easier way. Oh, good. Okay, great. We're going to get the cliff notes at the cliff notes. Yes. Fabulous. <laughs> so, um, so essentially some people call it the clench and hold. Have you ever heard of that or done that? Probably, but I don't think I've heard it in those terms. So tell me more. So are you familiar with Kundalini yoga at all? Sort of. Or jo- Dr. Joe Dispenza's oh, work? Oh, very. Okay. So, and have you been to um, Joe Dispenza's med- retreats? or No, do I do really his, should go. Do you do his meditation? Like the um, one where you bring the, um, you, you squeeze and then you bring the energy up? Yeah, like... Perineum and pineal gland and all that. Yes. And I read Becoming Supernatural, which was fantastic. Yeah, I read that one uh-huh. too. Um, so essentially that practice, which he calls the breath, mm-hmm. that's a tantric practice. That's a kundalini practice. Okay. So that's why at his events, so many women, young, old, and men too, have these kundalini orgasmic type of experiences. You know, I don't know if you've seen or heard about that, but it's, it's, they're no, having, really. they're having orgasms at his events essentially, okay. but they're energy gasms okay. because it's that Kundalini energy moving up and it's, it's what I, sorry. It's what okay. I described was that kind of full body enlivening blissful experience. So they talk about like coiled up, right? That's that Kundalini mm-hmm. imagery. Right. So, so essentially <clears throat> a lot of energy stagnates in the pelvic area, right? So it's the, um, from the, the heart down. Okay. And that's, that's how we're just navigating the world where we're in the doing mode, right? We're efforting through these lower centers. And in order to fully circulate your energy, you need to move that energy that's stuck down there up and out. And so in, so, for example, with Dr. Joe or um, Kundalini practice, it's about squeezing the those centers, mm-hmm. so the perineum up, and and you do that on the inhale, and you squeeze, and and then you hold the breath, and that that helps the energy to travel the stuck energy in the lower centers up and out, and so it's that very same method. So, for example. Say you're having sex with your partner and you're almost about to have an orgasm. You pause and you, you, what you could do is it's, um, you breathe in and out through the mouth very fast for Mm -hmm. about 30 seconds. And then you might, um, do that twice. Okay. And then you clench your whole body. So imagine your whole body. Yeah. Well, eventually your whole body, but you start with the lower centers. Okay. You, you do that Joe Dispenza. I'm like doing it right now. You do that. Okay. Well, let's both do it. (laughs) Um, You do that Joe Dispenza breath and you clench, 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 and you'll naturally clench your hands and your feet will curl. And maybe your jaw clenches a little bit Mm -hmm. and you, you imagine the energy moving up and out. And you hold that clench for about 15 to 30 seconds. And that will take you out at least and and have that conversation with your partner ahead of time so that they're not surprised, but also (laughs) that they do it with you. Because if you're the only one doing it, then they'll be, you know, like left out and and also bother you, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because what you want is after that clench and hold, you want to just lay there for a good at least five minutes, but longer if possible, it, depending on your experience. If you're really out of your body, you you could l- lay there for much longer. And 
And when you do that, um, you'll have the experience that I'm talking about. And it's a quick way because you're already having sex. You're Mm -hmm. already right about to have an orgasm. And it takes that energy that you've cultivated through sexual practice and pleasure up and out the body. And you'll have that experience of it moving through the body and um, and also transcending out the head. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I will say that It's, you know, you do want to exercise some caution with this because some people have blocks. Um, They have either energetic blocks um, in their heart chakra or other blocks, um, or they haven't been taking very good care of their health. So if you're eating junk food and, you know, um, just in a lower vibrational dense state, it's, it's not safe to move energy like this because it could get stuck somewhere and create some kind of issue for you in the physical body. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, okay. so y- you want to be taking care of yourself, mm-hmm. you know, exercising, making sure you're sweating, that you have good bowel elimination, that you, you know, um, eat high vibrational food. Okay. You want to be taking really good care of yourself. Make sure that you don't have a lot of trauma that is unprocessed and mm-hmm. that you're not working on, you know, because you want to make sure that the vessel is clear before you start moving things around. Wow. Yes, of course. No, of course you do. Of course you do. But if you did and you weren't feeling super high vibrational, I mean, something good can still come out of it, right? I mean, like, or you think your energy is going to get stuck some way? It could. So some people end up with all kinds of issues. Like what? Like nervous system issues. Maybe they start twitching ear. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. Okay. Ear ringing is one of the more common ones. Um, But um, it can even manifest with like chest pain, things like that, pain in a, in a part of your body. So, um, so that's why these practices are kind of the hidden arts, right? Because they were passed down guru to disciple essentially, where there was somebody who was guiding you. That was your, your mentor that was making sure that you weren't doing this safely and that your body was prepared. I think one of the best ways to prepare your body is to do pranayama. Have you heard of that? Yes. It's the yogic breath work. Mm-hmm. And so when you when you when you do that and you have a pretty good regular practice of that, you're already clearing your energetic channels like every day. And um and so I think uh, someone who does pranayama and is is skilled and they know what they're doing with pranayama, they're much much more likely to have a positive experience with moving other energy. Yeah. But what if they're not, what if it's just a regular person and you're like, okay, here's how you can do it every day or just implement some sort of practice to help you with that. What would you say? So I think it's important to make sure you're optimizing your health. Like I mentioned, Sure. but but if they're, if, if, just someone who's not taking care of themselves, but still wants to experience more of the tantric communion. Um, I would say they, they should first start getting into their body more. Okay. Whether that's through slowing things down, Mm -hmm. pausing in their life to experience through the senses, um, and connecting with them, with their, with themselves, whether that's through, um, journaling, whatever it takes to understand yourself and to feel very comfortable because a big part about being able to express yourself sexually and sensually is, uh, is feeling very established in yourself, feeling confident, you know, and, Mm -hmm. um, the moment a lot of insecurities come in, you get into your head. Mm -hmm. So even if someone just took very basic care of making sure that they're inviting more presence, more sensuality into their day-to-day experience, as well as um, connecting with themselves so that they can clear out some of the mental clutter. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to commune sexually and sensually in a way that is more tantric. And a lot of that is going to have an effect of you taking better care of yourself because you're going to be in more of a self-love space, Mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. At least I find, you know, and then it starts a a better cycle, a good cycle of I'm feeling better about myself. I want to do the things that are good for me rather than wanting to indulge in a, maybe a way that isn't so healthy, which is fine sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, you're right. It's a feed forward cycle. A feed forward cycle. I like that term. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. Okay. So we still got some time. So in 
when we keep talking about this event, it's one that you're having this weekend. So if people miss that, you will have more coming up and we'll give people that that'll be in the notes, how people can find you too. But one of the things that was, uh, you were talking about too, in this uh, workshop was um, basically being young, (laughs) (laughs) which I'm all for, you know, it was like magnetism and orgasms and all that radiance and all that. But it was like this youthfulness. I think, where was it? You've talked in here and you were like, uh, being here, it is being a magnetic, youthful and vibrant woman does not come from the outside. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you know, I'm pushing 50 and like, I want to know what you think about all that. Yeah. I think I already know, but why don't you go ahead and say so? I want to know what you already know. Tell me (laughs) what I already know. Yeah. I know that, um, it's about that self-love. It's about getting in touch with yourself. It's about that knowing. It's about trusting your intuition. It's about all those things, all the self-love practices, and they show. Mm-hmm. Because in the last year and a half, I've worked hard on those and really cultivating that within myself. And and I have people who are saying, you look better and better and better all the time as I'm doing less to my face. Mm-hmm. I still do stuff to my face. Don't get the total wrong idea. But um, but it's radiating out in a different way. Yeah. And like even someone said to me this week, who is actually, she's going to be on the show. I was doing a ketamine treatment and she was like, you're already, you know, moved forward on a lot of things. She was like, you can't fake this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, cool. <laughs> thank, good. Thank God. You know, you, you go like, thank God it's showing, you know? Um, but I mean, it is that youthful radiance that if you're not happy within yourself and if you're not l- truly loving yourself, then all the lotions and creams and injections in the world aren't going to get you there. Yeah. I love that. And I think you spoke to all the energetic and emotional component of youth, youthfulness and longevity. Yeah. And, and yoga and it's handstands. And, um, and so in the workshop, we're going to dive into the physical aspect. So what foods nourish youthfulness? And so, for example, like I mentioned in Ayurveda, right, we have these seven major tissues and the reproductive tissue is the last to be nourished, but it's also the, the marker of nourishment of the whole system. So, Hmm. so we talk about how we call this word, we call the word, um, ojas. Have you heard of that? No. How do you spell it? O-J-A-S. Oh, okay. And I, I really feel like it's similar to mojo, you know, ojas, oh. ojas, I, I, ojas, mojo. So I think that ojas is obviously a very ancient term. So uh-huh. I feel like mojo kind of was a spin on that. <laughs> um, so when someone has ojas, they are youthful and radiant and vital and have, um, have a resilience to their system, strong immunity. And, and it's like a sex appeal that shines through, right? And OGIS is directly, it's sort of the byproduct of healthy reproductive tissue. So you're right on. Okay. So in, in Ayurveda, we think about nourishment as taking 40 days. So anytime you eat something, it takes five days to nourish each respective tissue. So five times seven gets you to 40. Um, cause five for each. Okay. So at 40 days, essentially that thing that you ate nourishes your, your sexual organs. And there are a few foods that nourish the reproductive tissue directly. But when we think about rejuvenation therapy in Ayurveda, it's called Rasayana. It means to make juicy again. Rasa is like juice. So it's the rejuicification of the whole system. Rejuicification. Did you make that up? Yes. I love it. (laughs) And so I actually taught a workshop on, um, for perimenopausal and postmenopausal women of how do we become juicy again? And juice is a really interesting 
um, word because it's vaginal juice, right? Se se secretions, mm -hmm. but it's also a plumpness to the whole system. Mm -hmm. It's plump lymph, plump face, right? All of that. Juicy. That, juicy. Sure. Um, but it's also mentally, emotionally, like you said, juiciness for life, right? So one of the emotions that's both a byproduct of a healthy rasa, but also nourishes rasa is inspiration. So when you feel inspired, you're directly nourishing your lymph, but also your reproductive tissue. So the attitude that you described of, I remember you had a post that talked about all the things that you've you've done in the last five years that have been... Yes, you, I did. Right? And so you... Or have, last 10, really. Right. Yeah. So you have a lot of juice. You've got a lot of inspiration. You Thank know, you. you're... you're you're not thinking that you've reached a ceiling. It's like, what's next? I'm excited about this. What's next? I'm excited about exploring Tantra. What's next? Yeah. You know? And so I think oftentimes people get attached to a number or a decade and it's coming from the outside. Okay, I'm this age. And so that means this. They're losing their inspiration and their flow for life. And that translates sexually, sensually, and to the whole system because I talked about how that's a marker of how juicy you are in, in wow. all ways. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I was just looking up to how many days there are till the end of the year from when this comes out. There's like 50 days left. So everybody just start eating for your juices now <laughs> and we can, uh, we can get to it. Well, um, how old are you? I'm 43. Yeah. You look great. Thank you. Yeah. You look amazing. Um, that's very, very appealing. You know, mm -hmm. what kind of transformations have you seen from the, you know, Rasa and all that? Have you seen people just literally turn their lives around? Yes. And oftentimes we, we do this cleanse in Ayurveda, which is called Pancha Karma. And it's a cleansing of all those seven tissues. Mm -hmm. And then it's a rejuvenation phase. And people can essentially look 20 years younger from, from doing an in-depth process like that that might run over about a month. Wow. And they have facilities where you can go check in and check out of life. And that would be nice. But yeah. And, kids. <laughs> and, and, and just fully immerse yourself in that experience of cleansing and rejuvenation. And those are often used more for people who are trying to reverse medical ailments, but you can also use it as rejuvenation therapy. And I think the important thing to think about is oftentimes we're a society that's focused on cleansing, right? Juice mm -hmm. cleanse, this cleanse, that cleanse, but detox, no, blah, blah, blah. detox, right? Mm -hmm. But nobody's thinking about the rejuvenation phase, right? You cleanse so that you can rebuild. Right. So if you're just cleansing, you're going to keep wearing away and deteriorating the system. You need to rebuild it. And I think that's where Ayurveda does a great job is because it talks about, OK, now that you've cleansed the material, it's like taking a, the famous analogy within Ayurveda is you you don't dye a, sh a dirty shirt. You clean it first and then you dye it. So essentially you want to cleanse the body and then you want to imprint on the body what it is that you want to create. Totally. It's that same way with psychedelics, you know, like so many times people are just, uh, I think they call it, um, journey hopping. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's journey after journey after journey rather than actually saying, okay, I did this journey and then focusing on that integration, which is right. essentially that rebuilding. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I try really hard to focus on that rebuilding because it's so crucial because that's really what we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, a cleanse is a chance to reinvent yourself or a, a journey is a chance to just press the reset, reset button. But if you just keep pressing reset and you actually don't begin anything else, then. So what would you say? Let's say you did this energetic orgasm, which is essentially a cleanse of some of that energy that was in your lower half. Mm -hmm. How could you integrate? or rebuild after that? Like what practice would you do? Would you tell yourself positive things? Would you like, I guess it's just all the healthy stuff you could do after that. Really? You know, yeah. is that something that you would suggest? I, I, yeah, I think that, is there an opportunity there, I guess, to, to use that in that way? Definitely. Otherwise, you're just topping from one orgasmic experience to the next. Right? Sounds great. Um, Sounds fantastic. <laughs> orgasm hopping, not journey sure. hopping. Orgasm hopping. Um, so, so yeah, I think <laughs> um, 
I think the reintegration comes in the day to day moment to moment choices and and how you are in your daily life. Like, so for example, in some of my meditations, I, you know, become everything, right? So I'm the the bird that's looking at me on the beach, but I'm also the ocean and I'm the ground under me and it, I'm yeah, right. So I'm flowing and then I'm everything. If I just, I feel good for hours after, but then if I, you know, just drop back into day-to-day -day life and frustrations and traffic and all the things, then what's the point of having that experience, right? So it's taking that beautiful, profound knowing that you get in an orgasmic transcendent state. And how do you bring that into your day-to-day -day life so that you do remember your divinity? And right. You live it all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, and I think it takes more reminders. So, um, oh my God. So any, yes. So anything that takes you into, into bliss is your integration, right? Cause you can have these exponential moments of bliss where you have, you know, you're in an ecstatic state, but to not forget your ecstasy in your day-to-day -day life. Right. So even if you just have a moment to enjoy a warm drink or um, a conversation or a hug, whatever it is to recognize those moments as moments of communion and ecstasy mm -hmm. so that when you finish your day, maybe you do a little journal about all these ecstatic moments that you had, or y even a gratitude practice for those ecstatic moments, or just thinking about it as you're laying in bed of, um, I, when somebody once told me that we have these amazing divine experiences happening throughout the day, like synchronies, you know, mm -hmm. um, things that, you know, that it was just so perfectly timed. There's no way that there couldn't have been some other force that was helping secure that. Mm -hmm. And, and so remembering those moments, right. Remembering when those moments of flow and intense connection to spirit that yes, you are being guided and you are being supported and everything is happening for you. And so if you just forget about those times and, you know, get stuck in whatever's not working, then it, it it's the same thing of just um, taking those moments of extreme divine blessing and flow uh, or, or ecstatic pleasure and writing them down or noting them in your mind. I think writing them down is a great way to do it because then it's really translated into physical rea reality. But just recognizing the those, right? Because we can get so focused on what's not working and then feel so dissociated. Well, it's like what you said earlier. How'd you phrase it? Like brings like, or like increases, like, like increases, like, mm -hmm. you know, it builds, it builds on itself. Um, Abraham Hicks talks a lot about that. And like, you hold on to that thought for like 17 seconds or something. And that builds mm -hmm. on another one and another one. And so it, it, it all goes together. Just yeah. like we were saying. It's like what you focus on is what expands, right? Yes. So, so if you focus. So remind yourself of those. Yeah. So remind yourself of all those moments. And yeah. I think that's the integration because it's the day-to-day -day living of that ecstatic, blissful experience. And that, that, let's be real. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is, what are your daily practices like? I have so many. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear yours. Okay. It's okay that you have a lot. Yeah. I'm interested. So I do this fire ceremony twice a day. It's called Agnihotra and it's... <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. You do a fire ceremony <laughs> twice a day. Tell me. So it's a sunrise and sunset offering um, where essentially you recognize your communion to all that is. Um, and you, you kind of sur surrender the lower self or the individual into all that is, which is the fire. And so I do that. And but has, what is it? What do you do? Okay. Yeah. So it's... Um, I'm sorry. I need details. It's, it's a little pyramid a uh, copper pyramid and you can, I can show you where to buy it. Um, and you use, it sounds gross, but it's not. Um, it's um, dried cow dung essentially. Okay. And um, it has to be these three ingredients. It's coming from ancient tradition and the Vedas. The copper, the, the pyramid and the cow dung. And Are those the three elements? No. And um, the fire. So the, 
you use rice that's um, unbroken rice that's um, coated in ghee as a offering. Okay. And so right at sunrise and sunset, it, there's I have an app on my phone that tells me the exact time to the second where I'm oh, located. Oh, to the second. Okay. Mine only goes to the minute. Because um, because it has to be within a 20 second window. And so um, at that moment, it's all the energy converges and it's it's like you create a vortex with the fire and you can feel it. If you're over one day, I'll share it with you. Okay. And so I'd um, love to actually. Yeah. <laughs> can we do it in, before this comes out? I'm sure. Great. I do it twice a day. So yeah, anytime. <laughs> we've got we've got 12 or no wait, 14 chances before it comes out. Okay. And so um essentially you sit by the fire and you say a specific mantra with the fire right at the moment of the offering. What's and the mantra? So it's in the morning, it's Suraya Swaha, Suryaya Idam Namama, Prajapate Swaha, Prajapate Idam Namama. So it's just a two line offering. Okay. Yeah. So, and then in the evening, it's Agnaye Swaha. Okay. So essentially, you say this offering, um, this mantra with the offering, and um, and then you just sit by the fire and it's it's a beautiful vortex. You can feel the energy. It clears the space for two mile radius of all energy. So wow. so when you come to my house, you'll feel the energy because I do it twice a day. And um, uh, and so I have patients. I, I work with patients at the house. So okay, it's a really great way to clear the space. And I don't feel any negative energy in the house, no matter mm -hmm. who's coming in and out. So um, it's a really great great way to clear the space. But essentially, it's been um, set, studied. Um, they're coming out with more and more scientific studies about it and a documentary eventually um, where uh, – it helps crops. So essentially it changes the bioenergetics of the crops. So people use it, they call it Agni, uh, like Homa farming. And so essentially it helps nourish life. Wow. Okay. So there's one of your practices <laughs> or two. Okay. Yeah. So one, um, and let's see, I, I mean, I do that first thing and then I'll meditate with the flames for a little bit. And then I, do some pranayama. So I've been doing about 20 minutes of pranayama since at least a decade or more. And, um, and that's great for clearing your field, um, from a, a pranic channel standpoint. And then, um, I dry brush some days. I get in my sauna. Um, I have an infrared sauna. Mm -hmm. And then um, I definitely do some exercise in the morning before I eat to really activate my metabolism, um, whether that's like running or, you know, videos or whatever. And um, and so getting that sweat therapy in is so important, um, both with exercise and um, if you're not doing a full sweat with exercise, then in a sauna. Um, I'll drink some elixirs in the morning. So I like to have my, my constitution, Ayurvedic constitution I'm doing. Um, I juice some ginger and lemon and um, some raw honey. And so I'll have that. I do celery juice some days. Um, and what else do I do? I do an oil massage in the morning. So this is um, self oil massage in Ayurveda is a great lymphatic treatment. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's pretty much my morning practice. Um, yeah. Oh, and if I can get meditation in the morning, I'll do that like a longer Joe Dispenza type of meditation, mm -hmm. but if not, I'll do it later in the day after kind of the work day. Cool. And then anything else? I mean, I'm sure you've got a lot throughout your day, but those are the ones you try to hit every morning. I think so. Yeah. Um, What's your morning routine? So maybe that will inspire me to remember what I'm missing. I know mine has, um, mine varies just a little bit and it's shifted <clears throat> since Justin moved back in. And so he sleeps later than me. So I can't sit in front of my altar and do all the things that I like to do necessarily. So I've shifted a little bit and been trying to figure it out in a new way. Mm -hmm. But um, essentially I, I get pretty quiet in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I do um, Reiki on myself mm -hmm. in front of the mirror every day. I say a Reiki mantra that I modified myself. So I light something, Palo Santo or something, and um, and just cleanse the space around me. I look in the mirror with a self-love practice and 
then I incorporate some Reiki with a Reiki symbol. I'm a Reiki master. And then I- Me too. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. And so I modified the Reiki mantra and I say, um, just for today, I'm at peace. Just for today, I will work easy. Just for today, I show appreciation and gratitude. Just for today, I'm kind to all living things, including myself. Mm. And then I draw a card from- Currently, I'm on this divine abundance deck that I like, and I consciously draw a card. I draw three angel cards, and I make myself something tea. Some I've been on a cacao kick, so I've been doing some cacao in the morning, mm -hmm. and and then I just will sit for a while. I read a little bit. I write down five things I'm grateful for, and then I'll sit and meditate. Sometimes it's guided. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's short, sometimes it's long. It depends on what I've got, you know, mm -hmm. time-wise. And I'll do different things within that. I'll try to focus on a mantra sometimes or just focus on, lately I've been on a trust kick. So I am just thinking about trust. I trust myself or whatever I feel like I need to cultivate within myself, whether it's self-love or trust, whatever it is, whatever's coming up, worthiness, I don't know. And, um, and so... It depends if my kids are there or not, then, you know, I've got to go into mom mode. If they're not there, I will try to get some exercise if I can and I usually wait to eat a bit. But, um, yeah, that's essentially my, uh, my like morning practice. How long does that take you? It depends. It can take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour if I feel like it, you know, depending mm -hmm. if I want to read more, if I want to just sit and just be in a peaceful space. So I do like that. I get up pretty early just to do that by myself. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I used to be harder on myself where I felt like I had to check a lot of boxes <laughs> and now I feel like I've got some practices that have become ingrained in me like habits. And so there's probably things I'm forgetting right now to say, because they've just become second nature to me. Yeah you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, so that's been an interesting journey. I've become less hard on myself about, I have to do all this every day, you know, rather than, um, what's coming up consciously. What do I feel like I need and tapping into what you feel like you need in that moment mm -hmm. or today, you know, I think the most important thing out of any morning routine is to get into some kind of blissful state, you know, yeah. whatever gets you to bliss. Right. Cause I think, in Dr. Joe Dispenza has these really long meditations, you know, yeah. so sometimes you don't have time for an hour and a half or an hour, however long it is. So I'll do his, um, the breath that I talked about, you know, where you, mm -hmm. you bring the breath up and which is five minutes. And then I'll do the segment of his meditation that is about kind of feeling your connection to the divine and well, there's plenty of different meditations, mm -hmm. but he has a few where you're kind of able to forward ahead a little bit and just get to the clip of at least feeling the space around you and how that space is actually then filled with all that is and all the bliss and all of that. And so I think tapping into some kind of place that takes you out of your individual unique, like what you have to do that day, your emotions, your processing of whatever happened the next day, but but gets you into bliss, whether that's the gratitude or the energy work that you do on yourself or whatever it is that allows you to feel the abundance of yourself, that you're, you're, you're more than just this, this density. Oh, I agree. I agree. It also gives me the space to notice what is coming up. Mm -hmm. Like if there's a thought that I'm hanging on to and I can feel my heart space closing up, you know, I'm like, okay, there's a space where I need to release. There's a space where I need to let go. How can I do that? What's really going on? And it just gives me the quiet just to let the, as I say, grains of sand fall in the water to where the water becomes more clear and you're more able to function and you're more able to summon that peace as you go through your day, you know? So yeah. for me, it's not as much about the bliss. It's, and the interconnectedness, it's more about like being able to access that peace all the time. Like you said, going through life, maybe not necessarily in a state of full bliss, but in a state of full peace where yeah. a depressed, a depression, a closed heart and anger or whatever comes up, I'm more able to deal with it. 
I'm more able to release that stress and let it go and just be generally like more, more at peace, which leads to a more blissful state, which leads to presence, which leads to happiness and um, joy in the yeah. ordinary moments. And I think you bring up a good point, which is our inherent state is peace and bliss. Like that's, that's who we are. It's whatever happened the day before or the argument that we're holding on to or the thought or whatever, those are just layers that cover up who we actually are. So once we remove that and process it, then we're able to access the peace, which is just underlying who we actually are. And so it's just the uncovering of mm -hmm. the truth. And so when I find that I'm holding on to something, whether it's a thought or an experience conversation, I'll, I'll do a higher self journaling um, prompt. So essentially I, I get into character and I basically, um, as a child, essentially ask a question like on my computer is where I do it, but you can write it on a page. Um, but it'll just say, you know, I'm really sad about this. This is bothering me. Like, how can I understand this? And just as a child might ask a parent, right. Mm -hmm. And then I actually, you know, in, in plays where you have the character yeah. and then you dialogue, yeah. right? So I just write HS at colon. And then I, love it. Then I start typing, mm -hmm. what would my higher self guide me? What what advice would they give me? And it flows. And That's cool. I just go with whatever comes. And it's usually the best advice anyone could ever give me, you know, um, better than talking you to, to any... You need to make that into a series on TikTok <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, better than talking to any friend or, you know, we have the answers within and it's yeah. just... Just, we can literally get the answer from within ourselves if we just role play a little bit. And I'm glad you said that because there's something nagging at me right now that I have not been able to get out of my head for like two days. And I have a lot of questions around it and I haven't known how to deal with it. And so this is a great exercise mm -hmm. because really I just go, well, what if, okay, say that's, that's true. That's happening. What are you scared of? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think is going to happen? What's the ultimate fear here that you're worried about? You know, what's worrying you in this moment? And I've been trying to kind of get to the root of those, but this seems like a great uh, tool, yeah. I guess you'd say. Yeah, it's um, and it, it's about getting out of your head, essentially, because mm -hmm. you speak like you would a child speak to a parent, you know, cause you get to parent That's what yourself. I need sometimes I need to, I need that. <laughs> yeah. You get to just dumb it down for me, higher self. <laughs> yeah. You just parent yourself, you know, mm -hmm. you just, you give it over to your, the divine that is always in you and around you and ask, and you'll get the answer. You'll get it and you can either write it out or you'll know it. Mm -hmm. But I think something that we often forget is just to ask for help. Right. Whether that's to some God figure outside of ourselves or even within ourselves, if we don't pose the question, we won't get the answer. But we have to actually really ask. We can't just start to tr try to just turn it around in our heads like, oh, well, this side and that side. But just ask the question. Yeah. Yeah. And I do that for my patients sometimes. Like I'll be their answer. Cool. <laughs> sometimes it works. Yeah. That's so cool. So cool. Well, I know that we're getting close on time and I want to just open it up to you. First of all, I want to say thank you. You did this on short notice and I am so excited because I was really just moved by what's coming up for you this weekend, but, um, but also just by what you do. And so thank you so much for showing up the way that you have today. I'm really grateful and I learned so much and some cool practices that I'm excited to implement in my own life. And, and, you know, take those next steps and keep with the journey okay. for sure. And well, I want to hear about it. So let me know. I will. <laughs> I will. And, um, you know, as you think of things that you want to share and teach too, you're, you're welcome back anytime. Cause I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, but before we go, I want to open it up to you and just say, is there anything that came up, anything you really feel called to share before we go? And then of course I'll share how everyone can find you. So what would you, is there anything you can just, you can take a second, you know, whatever you need. I don't, I don't think I have much more to add today. I think, you know, I just want to leave people inspired. You know, I want, I want, want people to really stay alive, like follow your curiosity, follow your inspiration. Don't try to conform. Don't try to, um, don't try to follow a protocol. You know, there is no 
one way and there's no right way. And it's really, we're on this beautiful self-exploration journey and we don't have, there. there's no one career, there's no one um, relationship that is going to define you. It's really about um, tapping into what it is that you love. What do you enjoy? You know, that this is the tantric way. This is the sensual way. Following your bliss, following your joy, you know, really doing that, you know, like take good care of your vessel so that you're more likely to be able to follow your, your real bliss, mm -hmm. you know, because bliss isn't in a food. It's not in it's not in any particular experience. It's really about uncovering the bliss, like I mentioned, of who you are. And you can, and it's, and it's once you tap into that bliss, then it's about just reaffirming that bliss in every opportunity you can, you know? And it's, I think we all have such a beautiful blessing of a life. Like every moment is still the next moment to experience more you know, more of who you are, more, more of everything, um, more communion with, with, with yourself and with others and with all of existence, all of nature, all, all beings, all animals, you know? And so I just, I want, I want to just leave with that, that, um, let's all get super healthy so that we can really experience the potential of what life has to offer and, and not lose sight of that. Ah, oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I think that was perfect. And, um, and thank you. You know, that's, I find that very inspiring for myself. So I know that other people will, I just know it. So I know it deep in my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much. And let's review how everyone can find you. Of course, you're at Nisha Kana MD. K N I S H A K H A N N A M D on Instagram. And then your, you've got a lot of uh, different things online. Let's first, if people, are there still tickets available? We don't know. We I have guess. a few left. Yeah. We have a few left. Okay. So it's the, it's tomorrow. If you're listening in real time, right? November 12th for the magnetic woman, Tantra and Ayurveda for the modern woman event. Um, but what else is coming up for you and how can everyone find you if they want to take some of your courses or study with you? Yeah. So I have a few courses online that have been really transformative for patients in my practice. Um, I would say the most important and popular one is the gut reset. And that's because essentially our gut is central to our health and also our mental health and, mm -hmm. and honestly, spiritual health. When we cleanse the body, like we talked about, you know, we cleanse the whole field. So that's been one of the most transformative tools I use with my patients still today. Um, so if someone's not working with me directly, they could still access that. Um, and then I also have an Ayurveda foundations course. If people want to learn more about how to apply it and understand it cool. in their day to day. Yes, I see that. It's really and cool. A mini um, Pancha Karma rejuvenation cleanse that people can go through at home if they want to, um, which um, only lasts a couple weeks. Cool. And, and I'll put a link up to your teachable mm -hmm. so people can find these. But if okay. perhaps they don't are not able to click on that, how would you recommend people? Well, just find through it? my website. So okay. Nisha Khan, MD.com and then the healing courses are there. Great. Um, there's a self care and beauty rituals course. So if you're kind of wanting to do more of the, um, beauty from within and without, um, self-care practices like the oil massage. Cool. There's videos for all of that on how to do it. So those are the main ways that I'm, you know, sharing offerings. And then occasionally I'll do some live workshops. I haven't done one in a while, you know, with COVID and all that, mm -hmm. but I really do enjoy teaching in person as well. Beautiful. And then of course, working with me as a client, if that's something that calls to patients, I have these wellness journeys. I take people on and, um, uh, one of my favorite practices to share is Marma, which is Vedic acupressure. And so I call it um, Reiki pressure in a way because we're using energy healing as we're pressing these energetic points that, cool. that are access points to the mind and it shifts your whole field. And I'll do some sound work with that too. And so, um, so that's one of the packages. It's in one of the packages. Ooh, I want that. That sounds amazing. So, well, wonderful. Thank you so much, Nisha, for showing up today and for all you shared. I'm so grateful. Yeah, it was thank so you. really great to talk to you it and to was, be here. It was wonderful. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you.
Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Nisha Khanna. She was incredible. Remember that you can find her at Nisha Khanna, K-H-A-N-N-A-M-D.com or on Instagram in the same handle. So big thanks to her. And I'm going to put as much as I can in the notes today so you can find all the things that we talked about. And I, I do hope she comes back because I learned so much. I just... I just love getting that practical knowledge and opening myself up in new ways and developing new practices that we can all incorporate in an easy way, right? It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be complicated. So very cool. Uh, big thanks again to Anthony West and A Serio Arts is where you can find him. A little more about this art. So now if you're watching on YouTube, now you can see the whole thing, but it's still like, it's so good up close. So I'm going to put in like an up close video on my Instagram. Um, he, he also sent me some information about it. So I hope I'm saying this right. Cause I can't remember. Shibalba, Shibalba. So is that is the Mayan underworld and it is the mythological realm of the gods of death represented by the center of our galaxy. How cool is that? It is the womb of creation where everything goes to die and is rebirthed back into existence. This piece is Anthony's response to the journey that we're on through time and space as we journey towards liberation of ego and simultaneously reach closer to the technological singularity discussed by Ray Kurzweil. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> that actually goes so well with what we were talking about in the interview today and just this oneness that we can tap into. Even technology is part of it, right? What are we creating? right? We're creating all the time and that's part of it. Anyway, big thanks to him. Big thanks to you for being here. Big thanks to Nisha. Thanks to our team at Hot Pie, to Alyssa um, running everything today and just gratitude in every direction that I can spill it the fuck out. Um, I love you so much. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm just, again, so excited to see this grow and flourish and keep sharing our voices so that we work on becoming our best, happiest selves. Overcome that fear. Listen to what Nisha said at the end, right? Where she said, I hope this just inspires you to not conform, to not think that there's only one way to do things. There's not. There's your way. And that's right. And the path you're on is exactly where you're supposed to be right now. How about that for your affirmation this week? I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Poof. Yeah. Yeah. Hard to believe sometimes, but it is true. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. And that is beautiful. And so am I. Even with all this resistance, all this stuff that comes up, all this, these things, you know, we are. We are. So keep on taking that next step building your habits, shifting your mindset, overcoming fear and rocking your fucking life. You've only, well, maybe you've only got one. I don't know, but you've, you're here now. So we might as well. I mean, I was thinking the other day, what if we die or move on to the next plane of existence and we find out we had like control in our minds the entire time? What if we found that out? That would be like, whoa, what was I doing? <laughs> Bringing myself down? No. Anyway, I love you so much. Big thanks. And uh, again, check the notes to follow Nisha, follow Anthony and share with a friend too. So rate review. If you enjoyed this show, please do. It really matters. Hit the five stars at the bottom, write a quick review or quick something. It matters. So thank you again. I'm wishing you abundance, energy, gasms, external gasms, whatever you want to have. I'm wishing you love, joy, bliss, peace, all the good stuff. Go rock it till we meet again. Thank you so much for listening. If you liked this show, please rate and review. It totally matters. And I encourage you to spread the love too and share this episode with a friend if you feel called.